What do you mean you're not going to take the deal? <laughs> this negotiation is going so bad. I sincerely apologize for my friend here. Could you hold, please? Never go into a real estate negotiation without these five steps. One, 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 one shot. Now the future for sure. Let's go. I'm turning dreams into reality. Yeah. It's one, all, one shot. Now the future for sure. Let's go. You know how much money I have lost from really bad negotiations, which is why I've brought in the queen of negotiation, Pam Barty, and today we're talking about the top five ways to negotiate the perfect real estate deal. Your ability to negotiate a deal really determines whether you're gonna win or lose. The stakes can be super high, which is why I brought in Pam Barty, who's negotiated nine figures in the game of real estate. Pam, how important is it to learn how to negotiate well? Learning to negotiate is absolutely everything in a deal. It determines whether or not you win or you lose the deal, and you always want to win. If you're maybe wondering what is meant by this whole idea of negotiation in the game of real estate, the art of negotiation includes two or more parties attempting to find a common middle ground that is beneficial to both sides. Real estate negotiations usually end up with one or more parties compromising or settling on mutually agreeable points. A sales transaction can literally have hundreds of potential variables, and in the game of real estate, it's usually not that complicated, but it determines whether you're gonna make a lot of money or whether you're gonna make less. All right, so today, we've got Pam that's gonna be teaching us the five steps of negotiation. Now all we have to do is set the stage with a scenario. In fact, let's do a scenario that you should be really interested in. Let's say that you're an investor and you're looking for a really good deal. Uh, you might go and tell a bunch of realtors that you're looking for really good deals. You might put up some signs in yards. You might go onto social media and say, I buy houses, you've seen those. And all of a sudden, the phone rings and it's somebody that wants to sell their house to you. And of course, what do they want? They want the highest price possible. What do you want? You want the lowest price possible. And here we enter in with the five steps of negotiating. Pam, if, if the phone rings and they want to sell you that house, what is step one? Step one in this process is you always have to remember that your goal when you're speaking to this person on the other side is to get an in-person meeting. Why in person? Because your tactics to negotiation will be that much stronger in person as opposed to on the phone. All right, Pam, so the goal is to get an in-person meeting but they're still on the phone with you. So what's the second step? So the second step is you have to craft your script very accordingly to get that in-person meeting. Because guess what? If they don't like you in speaking to you on the phone, do you seriously think that they're gonna meet with you in person? Uh-uh. So this is where we wanna establish rapport. What is rapport? It is essentially, there's a lot of definitions, but it is essentially making somebody like you and trust you so that that way they will transact with you. That is how you win in negotiation deals. So when you're building the rapport, you want to get that in-person meeting. So what do you say to them? Hi, how are you? Respond very kindly to their message and make it about them. It's not about you. Remember, you are trying to be very friendly and establish that rapport so that you can get that in-person meeting. If they start asking numbers, then you just say, I would love to tour your beautiful home and analyze the deal because there could be hidden factors that I can't see from the outside. So I would love an in-person meeting with you just to have the opportunity to tour and we go from there. We're on step three. Pam, what is step three? Step three is when you land that in-person meeting after you've spoken to a seller on the phone and you are meeting them for the very first time and you show up at their property. Nice to meet you. This is what you wanna do when you're sitting down with the seller. Hi, Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How's your day going? Uh, actually, pretty good. So, tell me about this property. Well, you know, I mean, it's been in my family for the last 30 years and, uh, you know, we finished raising our kids here and we just feel like it's time for, you know, a change. And so I think there's some sentimental attachment, but, you know, I mean, it's just time. It's time. And now what are, what are your goals? What are your family's goals? Oh, I mean, you know, obviously we, you know, we, we want to sell the house. We want to get a, you know, a good price for it. We want to get a fair price for it. And then, you know, we're, we're going to downsize into a condo and hopefully take the difference and use it for, you know, retirement. Wonderful. Would you mind showing me around the property? I'd love to hear all about it and your family and the memories that you've built here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? 
Fast forward to walking through the house and obviously Pam's gonna build a lot of amazing rapport. <laughs> <laughs> So this is what you, that is exactly what you want to do during a negotiation. You see, he started talking about his family. You talk about everything but the deal. So that person warms up to you. They like you. They're like, oh yeah, let me show you my daughter's room, my son's room. Like that is what you want to do. You want this person, you want the seller to be able to want to walk you through their house and tell you the story. You, you know, it's interesting, Pam, because it's almost like um, if they were selling to someone they didn't know, that's just an object and they want to get the best price. But if if they were selling the house, for example, to a family member, you know they would probably give them a good deal. What you're really trying to do is say, hey, let's get on a more friendly basis, let's build a rapport, let's connect, let's actually see that we're both important human beings, we have goals and objectives, and if there's some heart and there's some care, then that's probably gonna lend itself to a stronger negotiation. That is absolutely correct, Chris. You wanna build that rapport because people do business with other people that they know, like, and trust. After you've toured the property with the seller, they've told you about their goals and their dreams, and then you ask about, well, what is your ideal number for this property? What would be a price that you would be okay with? Let them talk and let them talk to you about it. And from there, you say to them, I will do my research, I will pull every comp I can, and I will see what I can do to get as close to that number as humanly possible because I want what's best for you and your family. Along the ways though, Pam, you have to have found some major no-nos when you're actually sitting down with them and touring the house. What's the number one thing people should not do? The number one thing that people should not do is walk through someone's house and just be like, Ew. like, remember this person may have had a family member that lives there or lives there themselves. You want to treat the person with dignity and respect. All right, we're on to the fourth step of a negotiation. And remember, this could be you landing the most amazing deal. Pam just told me about her last deal. She made $150,000. Pam, what is the fourth step? Fourth step is create a killer offer to the seller. Now, what does that mean? Doesn't necessarily mean just the purchase price. What other incentives can you give the seller that are gonna close the deal? For example, say you're dealing with a family, right? And they just wanna make this, a, this transaction the quickest easiest transaction ever. An example of a deal that I've done. I gave them what they were asking for because the numbers worked for me. And I also said, listen, I will also pay for storage of your items for three months. No problem, it's on me, I'll cover it. What does that three months cost to me? It was like 600 bucks additional, but to the seller, it was really a big deal. So you wanna throw in incentives to make the seller's life easier because that shows that you care about them and not just the deal. So that is one of the ways in which you can create a killer offer. So it's not always price. Remember the terms also make a difference as well as the incentives. Man, you're this close to scoring a really good deal. What is the fifth and final step, Pam? The fifth element is that you close the deal with the seller. Once you've built that rapport, you've met with them in person, you've toured the property, you've done your due diligence, you've come up with the purchase price, and now you're gonna deliver that offer to them with those incentives for you to score the deal. So you meet with the seller in person, and that's another thing, you follow up always with an in-person meeting. You don't just email an offer, you show up in person, you are present, and you say to them, hello, I'm here to deliver this offer to purchase, I wanna make this deal as easy as possible for you, Please take your time in reading this contract. If there's anything that we can work on, you let me know and we will make it happen. I wanna make this the easiest deal for you and I want you to love this deal. So let's work together in making something happen. I can tell you that with following these five steps, I have never missed a deal, not once. Maybe the price shifted just a little bit in my favor or there was another incentive I added or something, but I have always closed the deal with these five steps. So go out there and get this awesome off-market deal and crush it. Gotta tell you, Pam Barty delivered on her five steps, her secrets to how she negotiates really awesome deals. And you know, speaking of negotiating deals, I've got my own system for how I negotiate to have gotten to 5,000 single family homes. The steps are different, but at the end of the day, what we share in common is really good deals. Let me ask you, now that you watch this video, you're either thinking, I am so inspired, I wanna go out there and freaking negotiate like crazy, or you might be thinking, you know what? What I really need to do is let an expert negotiate for me. I recommend that you find the best realtor in town and have them negotiate your deals, or you can partner with me and I could negotiate 100% of all these deals for you. 
check it out. At the end of the day, there's hard ways, there's simple ways. You just got to ask, do I want to be out there negotiating or do I want experts to negotiate for me? Make the right choice. And if you're interested in partnering and getting your hands on literally some of the best negotiated deals in the market right now, click the link below. Let me give you access. Chris, thank you so much for having me here today. It has been such an honor to teach all of you the five steps to an awesome negotiation deal to crush your real estate deals. And listen up, if you're interested in accessing the ultimate guide to investing in real estate, I made this video just for you. Check it out and let me show you how to get started right now. What, so, so you're gonna take it and you're gonna walk this way and you're gonna keep walking and you're gonna face the camera. That makes sense. So you don't wanna show the camera your back. Show it to me once, just okay. show it to me all from the very top. What if, what if you say here, so I, would that be easier? No. Do you think it's better? No, 